here you go. This is the main reason, contributing factor that I was talking about. Plus, this time of year, um, around the halving, we usually get uh, about three weeks or more of uh, you know uh, down movement. So I'm looking for that, and that's going to probably be it uh, once this occurs. But we do also have until June, early June. Uh, before we can see a bigger up move. So there's a couple of scenarios here, but you can see that the Grayscale's GBTC outflows are what's impacting all of this. And um, so that's kind of good for the market. You want to see that. Uh, this is normal. And the outflows uh, compared to the inflows, uh, I mean, it's... Uh, we just got to get rid of GPTC. Uh, once they convert to the, you know, uh, to the better products, the more competitive ones, I guess you can say, we'll we'll get the uh, um, the movement to the upside. But we got time, no rush, and uh, it's going to be very interesting. And we'll see what the uh, the volumes are as they they. Uh, here you go, as they just increase over time. Um, but this is these are early days, and you want to see this pullback because this is positive for the marketplace. Uh, anyway, on to the video. Uh, enjoy. Good morning. All right, here we are with Bitcoin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another video in a couple days. Uh, what is today? Today's Tuesday. So Thursday, um, and that's going to be focused on all the coins. I've got about uh, 11 to 12 coins, I believe, uh, that people have requested. So we're going to save that video for in a couple days. What I'm going to do now is focus on the move we had in Bitcoin. And one of the reasons why I'm going to focus on this is because of the fact that uh, this is completely to be expected. And this is one of the things that I was looking for, is for us to pull back. Um, and how far are we going to go? Well, that's the question I want to know. I'm going to point out some uh, support points, some low areas. But this is technically setting up for the, the next bull market. And um, so we want to see this, is what I'm saying. So the first thing we have here this over here. If I can grab this little circle. There goes one. And I like these because I can go over and make them into little. And let's grab this and copy and paste. Get two of them. <coughs> and there goes another one right there. So these two points right here are, are of interest to me. And then the only thing below that would be numbers that go all the way down to here, to this 52k area. Um, I very much want to be buying into the sellers uh, because of what I'm going to be looking at and I'll show you that in this chart. Um, mainly I'm going to put more money into Ethereum uh, more so than even Bitcoin. So there you go, mind blowing. I'm also going to uh, go for some of these top end um, altcoins, a few percentages into them as well. Probably I'm going to up the amount and get it up to like five percent, which is, um, you know, uh, I'd say five to maybe even as high as eight uh, percent into some of these altcoins because I'm going to be looking for a big move up. Uh, in the coming months and I've got plenty of time I mean this is the period of time and it usually lasts what about three weeks um, so we're the next month let's say for all of April uh, where you're likely to get a pullback and uh, uh, your accumulation phase I guess you can say I've seen this happen many times um, so uh, where could we go so I'm looking for numbers down here and even down to here and possible I don't know how likely it would be because uh, this is mostly all re 
uh, in uh, from one single source, and that's the grayscale. The grayscale trust is being liquidated because uh, they're converting it into the other ETFs out there that just basically have much better pricing. So they have the ability to go over and, and gain, and they can take their time and get good prices, as can everybody. Um, but uh, that's very bullish. Uh, that liquidation, this is just, I mean, it's like, uh, I, I hate to say it, but it's to me free money, uh, a free money event. Uh, because these prices that you see that are on the downside uh, are not going to last. And I'm going to give you the projections of what I'm looking for going forward. Uh, but we are in a period of time where we could have uh, reversals. And, uh, you know, that would be good if we can get to numbers even down to here and even lower. Um, fantastic. I want a pullback to buy more. Uh, I already started buying again last time. Okay, let's go over and pull up this. And I bought before down here in the 62K range. And I have to wait for numbers to get back down at or under that mark to start buying more. And I'm going to go in big um, just because of the timing. And I'm going to kind of change my philosophy. I'm going to probably go bigger into Ethereum more so than even uh, uh, Bitcoin. And I'm not gonna worry about uh, the downside numbers. I'll keep a certain amount. If we do get bigger pullbacks, that would be great. I would love to see that. Um, I think the volatility um, and the ranges are going to collapse. They're not gonna be as big and wide as they were in the, in the past, unfortunately. But that remains to be seen. I can't predict the future. I'm not Ms. Cleo. Um, so you got to keep that in mind. Miss Cleo, she had tarot cards and, you know, I, what do I got? I got like a crappy magic eight ball from the internet. So <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, but uh, Ethereum is one. This is another one here. I would have to look for a pullback. The next one is for it to go down to the level where we were before and under here. So let's do another circle. Oh, I guess I could, yeah, I can cut and paste. Still have that. So there goes that right there. And then under that would be uh, all the way back to the 27K area. If we can get a bigger move down there, that would be fantastic. Um, I, I would basically say this, this is in this realm of time, for the next three weeks, once the three weeks go on after um, uh, after the having, uh, so we're in this period. So the next month and change, let's say, uh, there's a it has to come together. First, we have to hit the having, um, and then from there, we you know this is a pre-having pullback. So it, this kind of makes sense, and. Uh, I'm, I'm enthusiastically going to be buying the dip is the only way I can say it. And I'm going to be going in big, uh, bigger than I ever have. How about that? Uh, because I'm going to give you the projections of the upside I'm looking for. And you might be impressed by that. We'll see. Um, all right. So speaking of that, let's go over and go to the, the larger. We're going to go to a monthly. We're not going to just go to anything else we're going to a monthly and I'm going to give you the targets that I'm looking for here's the ones on uh, Ethereum I think you can get the numbers all the way up to here my minimum targets right there around that 10,000 mark so Ethereum if we look at the percentages on the upside and so forth where that can go uh, this makes perfect sense and it's wide-ranging so uh, compared to Bitcoin, I think it has more uh, potential for a breakout to the upside. And remember, this is similar to what uh, setting up in here. This is similar to what Bitcoin did back in 2016. It is eerily 
similar. Um, except for it could have even more upside than the, the numbers that go all the way up to here. But I don't want to get ahead of the, the game. Uh, first, we'd be looking at this 10,000 area, and then numbers that go all the way up to the 20K. So you have that. And so I'm going to be more overweighted in Ethereum than Bitcoin. Plus, there's a positive thing uh, in it with the ETFs. At some point, the SEC is going to get sued again, more than likely, and they're going to pave the way for Ethereum to have their ETFs. That's just what's coming. Uh, that's the next logical step, and BlackRock and others uh, are setting the, the um, are paving the roads uh, for this to happen. Let's just put it that way. Uh, that's going to be their main focus, and the SEC is going to have to relent, um, you know, because of the fact that they'll get sued again if they don't, and they don't have any good logic or reason to not allow an Ethereum ETF. So that's why I'm more positive on uh, Ethereum than anything else, even Bitcoin. But I'm still very positive on Bitcoin because Bitcoin does have an ETF. And let's go over and look at its projections from here. Um, if we get the parabolic move up, which we are more than likely to do, as we have done every four years, and it usually lasts between that, you know, 18 months, right? After the happening. Uh, so where could we go on Bitcoin? Uh, I'm not looking for numbers in here. Uh, I mean, this would be the minimum targets. Uh, that's nice. Nope, don't care. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for numbers that go all the way up. Here, let's, let's bring this down to mainly this 241,000. And then beyond that, numbers that go all the way up to 482, just around that 500,000 mark. So this would be the breakout above all of the previous highs and the bigger move upward. Here's your first target, the 242. And I don't have to tell you on a percentage basis what this means. You know, when uh, you're looking at a 4X or uh, move uh, four to five times your, your movement and above and higher, uh, I, I don't have to tell you, that's pretty nice. And I would fully expect this to occur because at some point, once the the Grayscale uh, GBTC trust or whatever is done liquidating and converting, um, you know, because this is supply into the marketplace. Uh, it's going to be going into uh, diamond hands, I guess you can say, if you remember the GameStop analogies. <laughs> um, and once it goes into those diamond hands, here's what we're going to be looking for. And... Here's my main target, right there. I'm trying to make that more straight. Yeah. It's not really straight, is it? No, it's not. How about now? It looks better, it still looks a little. All these drawing tools of trading view are pain. All right, so that's as good as I'm gonna get. And Let's main target. We're gonna go over and oh, come on! I'm supposed to click on it. It's supposed to. There we go. Thank you. And there we go. So that's what I'm focused on right there. That 240k uh, area. Uh, that's what I would be looking for as an extension upward. And that's about the 4.23 mark uh, from the range here to there, from this high to this low. And then you break up to these numbers up here. Um, if you want to be very bearish and very conservative, this would be the area you would be looking for before you get a pullback. 
Uh, so we're looking at the 107 to 122 area, basically the low 120K range, which is logical. Then say we get a pullback that goes maybe all the way down to uh, the uh, 60K area where we are right now, uh, and then continuation up to the main target. That's a possibility. The problem is there's these ETFs, and they're not going to have the crazy retail players that we had in the past. They're locking up the Bitcoin and just holding it for years, for years. And nobody gets that. Uh, uh, so we're, we're talking about years going out into 28, not even 28, more like 30. 2030, we're talking about over five, six years from now uh, before any of these people would ever be selling. Then they're not going to be looking to make, uh, you know, 100% profit or whatever. They're going to be looking to make five times, ten times their money uh, going out. And they're you're going to be looking for numbers that go all the way up here and higher, maybe. Maybe up to the 700,000 range, the eight. Uh, maybe even up to that one million per coin range in the years to come. But that's my strategic thinking now is I don't think I'm going to get the volatility. And we're going to see because how far of a pullback are we going to get here? If we don't get that big of a pullback, um, say it only goes down $10,000, which is not that big, uh, then, you know, it's going to be kind of like, blah, so what? Uh, when we do get the move upward, we're going to see how it goes. It's just going to be a steady flow, you know, with minor pullbacks. It's going to get boring, is what I would expect it to do. And uh, continuation higher, people freaking out every time it makes a new high. And say we go up to here or there, pulls back a little bit and then keeps going up higher and higher and, and until we hit a big point. And right now, nothing in this chart is giving me any indication of uh, technical patterns that are going to get pullbacks outside of what we did down here. Unfortunately, these lower pullback areas here and all the TA got blown away. It was just destroyed. And the reason why is because these ETFs are just buying and holding. Uh, they're sucking out the volatility. There's no... Uh, gravitas for uh, the volatility to happen. Uh, any big pullbacks get bought is simply what happens. Uh, they are very patient. They'll take their time. They have got tons of money on them just waiting. They got tons of money just waiting. They're like, go ahead, uh, Grayscale, please sell, you know, liquidate your, um, your holdings and let us get into the marketplace. We're going to slowly just accumulate it. No big deal. We're not worried about it, and they're going to cause tremendous price rises. And that's why I'm looking for what you see up here to occur. And numbers to get all the way up to this 200. And this is my main target. This 4.23 and uh, the 240 range, um, which is much bullish, more bullish than previously. Just looking for numbers that get to the, the mid $100,000 range. Now, scenario-wise, we can go much higher, and we can get numbers that go all the way up to here, and maybe even pass it to the $700,000 range. That would also be a possibility. So crazy is going to happen, and that crazy is likely to be where? To the upside. And it's just a matter of time that scarcity is going to hit, and nobody knows what kind of... Uh, what the cause of the scare, you know, what the, uh, it's probably going to become global. Uh, the frenzy of crazy buying is going to start to become global. Because right now it's all centered in uh, Europe and the U.S. Um, but other countries are going to start getting involved. And you're going to see just insanity. But it's going to be to the upside. And the pullbacks, I just don't see them being relevant anymore. That's why I'm going uh, to go all in. Now, um, in the next video, I'll talk about 
you know, the altcoins that you sent me the list of, I've got the whole list. There's quite a few of them. Um, but that's going to save that for that video. So this video is what my thinking is right now. And I'm going to be looking to buy any of the pullbacks I can on the short term. And I hope we get further downside here. I don't even know if this would last before it pops up and takes out the highs. We'll see. Uh, you can see the volume just drops off. Uh, so they're just converting the, the GBTC, um, the grayscale, uh, that's just getting converted to other ETFs that are much better pricing, like uh, the BlackRock guys. So that's what's going on right now. I uh, hope you enjoy the video, and I'll see you in the next. And I'll include some of the main altcoins that I'm getting into. Uh, you know what they are. They're pretty much standard. They're the SUI, SEI, GRT, um, SNX uh, is one that I was asked about, and that one I'm not too uh, interested in, but I'll do the TA on that. The ICP I was asked about. Um, but some of the ones that I'm interested in are Avalanche, Solana, you know, even though Solana's pulling back, uh, Solana's a great one, Link, as always. And um, yeah, this is the opportunity time because uh, Adam, uh, the upside on some of these are gonna be crazy. Um, Doge, uh, Doge is gonna be one of my favorites, by the way. Um, I just know Elon is waiting, he's chomping at the bit. <laughs> so anyway, until the next video, and I will see you probably Thursday, Friday at the latest. Uh, uh, my family is gone for from Easter, so I'm back in action. See you then.